I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and today I'm gonna to show you how to rebuild the transmission on your Polaris Razor. Now we've got our 2019 Polaris Razor XP4 1000 in the shop. We were out driving this and we heard some noise coming from the back end. So we pulled over and we saw that our bearing was coming out of our transmission case, which is not good. So we need to get in there and make repairs, but whether you have bad bearings, maybe you have a bad high gear or bad snorkel gears, whatever's going on, we're gonna show you how to repair that. The process will be similar for your 2014 and newer Razor 900s, 1000s, your turbo models. This is even gonna work for some of the Polaris Generals, but whatever machine you're working on, you do wanna refer to your model specific service manual. Now, with that being said, this is a more in-depth project, but anybody with a little bit of mechanical knowledge can do this. It's just gonna take a little bit of patience. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. To get this job done, we're in the shop, so we're using safety glasses. But other than that, you're gonna to wanna to have a torque wrench. We've got common hand tools. I'm not gonna go over all that, but specific things like a two jaw puller and the Tusk crank bearing and gear puller set. You will need these to get the transmission disassembled and remove the bearings and gears from it. Now we've also sourced some nine inch studs that we're using with this as well. Now, other than that, you're gonna need belt and clutch tools. So we've got a clutch holding tool, belt removal tool, clutch puller, and you're gonna need a center to center distance tool. This is from Polaris, but the best way to do that is with the SDI alignment bars, and we'll get more into that later. Now, other than that, we're gonna be using some transmission fluid. We have assembly lube, medium strength Loctite, contact cleaner, and some gasket maker. As far as parts go, we're gonna get more into that during inspection, but if you need any upgrades, you're gonna to wanna to check our website, and you're also gonna to wanna to look at the OE diagrams for anything that you might need for your transmission. Now, before we remove any parts, I do wanna point out that our service manual recommends that we remove this cargo bed. Now, I have heard of people getting this job done without taking this off, so it's up to you whether or not you wanna do it, but we're gonna do this the way the service manual wants us to, and for that, we're gonna start out by removing the rear seats. We need to disconnect our negative battery cable and the access panel. You also wanna remove any accessories that are gonna get in your way. So for us, we had to remove our rear window. And from here, we need to disconnect the drive line. So we're gonna remove the center console. Now, there's a lot of fasteners that go into all this body work, and it's really important to stay organized as you disassemble everything. So you can use some Ziploc bags and label the hardware as it comes off. Now, before you remove the front and center console, what you wanna do is put the transmission in high gear. And that's gonna help us in a later step. Now that we have the center consoles out of the way, we can disconnect our prop shaft, but what we need to do is there's a bearing carrier. It's right underneath where that rear center console was, and you've got two bolts you need to take out of that. So we're using a 15 millimeter socket and a swivel, as well as an extension and breaker bar to get those out. You're gonna have to pull them out with a magnet. And this is kind of hard to see, but this is where it is. Next, we're gonna pull the prop shaft forward as far as we can. And we're also gonna pull it to the driver's side. That's gonna get us pretty close to removing this from the transmission. Now, if you removed your skid plate, you actually might be able to move this around to where you can pull the whole thing out right now. But for us, we don't wanna remove the skid plate. And what we're gonna do is wait to finish disconnecting this until we have the transmission mounts loose. Next, we're gonna remove any accessories from the back of the machine. We need to remove the back section of the roll cage, and we're also gonna remove the cargo bed. So once you have that roll cage out, you can start removing those fasteners. But again, if you don't wanna remove everything, you can focus on just removing the rear transmission mount, pulling the throttle bodies back, and then remove that air boot from the side. Now, if you do it that way, it's gonna be a little bit harder to reach everything as you work. The next step is to remove the air box and to get that out, you've got a bar on top. You're gonna to take that out and you don't wanna forget the mount that's on the bottom either. So that's what it takes to get the cargo bed and air box out. But like we mentioned before, we have seen people remove the transmission without doing those steps. So just be aware of that. Now from here, you're gonna remove both wheels on the back and we're also gonna be removing the lower shock mount on the left side in front of the clutch. Now that we have that done, we can go ahead and remove the clutch cover. We're gonna remove the belt and both clutches. Keep in mind the primary drive clutch, you are gonna to have to use a puller to get that off.
And we're also using a clutch holding tool to undo the fasteners. Now we need to remove the cover behind the clutches. Next, you want to temporarily set the shock and mounting bolt back into place. And then we need to remove the stabilizer link upper mounting bolts. So we're gonna take that out and then we also need to disconnect our radius rods and we're gonna remove the brake caliper as well. So I've got that lower caliper mounting bolt loose. I'm just gonna let it rock back far enough to remove this upper radius rod mounting bolt. So now I'm going to pull the lower shock mount back out, get this out of the way. I've got a jack stand holding the trailing arm right here. And then to remove the drive shaft, all we need to do is pull this out. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Then we're going to drain our transmission oil. Don't forget to reinstall the drain plug. We're just going to temporarily install it. And once we have everything out, we'll clean everything up much better. Okay, right side of the case, we're going to pull this clip off. Disconnect our cable. There's a little washer on the back side. That'll just come right off. We're gonna use a 19 millimeter wrench. Loosen this cable up. We're already in high gear like we mentioned earlier. And I'm just not gonna touch this nut right here. And that way we don't have to do too much to the adjustment when we go back together. From here, what we need to do, we've got this vent line, we'll disconnect that. And then we've got a couple brackets on here. And rather than mess with these plastic connectors, I'm actually just gonna remove these bolts and take the brackets out. So with those out of the way, what we wanna do is disconnect our sensors now. And then from here, we're actually freed up. All we need to do, there's gonna be five mounting bolts on the transmission. We need to loosen all those and remove the mounting bolts. On ours, we actually have seven. We have an SDI uh, mounting plate on there. It makes it a little more rigid. So we just have two extra bolts. On the back side of these, you have a nut plate. So make sure you keep track of that. And then also we've got two mounting bolts going into the motor. We're just gonna crack those loose. Now, when you get to the rear mounting location, we're gonna need to loosen up the other two mounting bolts before we re remove this bolt. And we're actually gonna pull this whole bracket off. So we're gonna take these three bolts out that come in from the other side as well. Now, if you do have a motor mounting plate like this, it is a good idea to back off those set screws when you remove all of your hardware. So with the last three mounting bolts loosened up, what I'm gonna do is take a block of wood. I'm gonna set this underneath the transmission to support it, and that's gonna help us remove these bolts as well. Now that the mounts are out and we've got the transmission free, what we need to do is take the three bolts in this upper hanger bracket, and that's gonna give us enough room to move the transmission back so we can free up the prop shaft. Back on the passenger side, we do have this bracket for our cable, and I do wanna remove this before we take the transmission out, that way it doesn't hang up on anything. Now that the transmission's free, we're gonna move it out from the driver's side, and it's a good idea if you have a friend to help you do this, we highly recommend it. Now, before we open this up, it's always a good idea to clean things first. So I'm just gonna use a tire brush. This is gonna help us get it done quick and get some of that dirt off. So we got the transmission as clean as we can. We've got it on the bench and it's leaning onto the left side and we're supporting it with some wooden blocks. So the first thing we're gonna disassemble, we're gonna start with this linkage arm. So we have this in high gear. I'm just gonna hold that in place so it doesn't 
shift out of high gear while I loosen this nut. Now this arm's on here pretty tight. I'm just prying it up with a little pry bar. And you're gonna have to work this back and forth. Just be careful when you're prying on this, you don't wanna damage the casing. Next, we've got a sensor. We're gonna take off the E-clip and the spring underneath. Plane washer underneath that. And you should be able to remove the sensor. Next, we're gonna remove the five bolts for the sector cover. So at this point, we should be able to pop this up. You might have to pry it up because it's gonna have some sealant on the other side. So we're pulling off that sector cover and I wasn't prying in between the sealing surface. There's just a little lip. I was able to hit up on the edge of that to get this off. Sometimes this shaft is gonna stay down in, in here, but it came off on ours. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get the spring out and the shaft is gonna come out just like that. We've got an O-ring, we're gonna remove that. So this is the detent pawl. Next we have the detent star. Then we have the shift sector gears. So these got jumbled up, but you'll notice there's some timing marks on them. So we'll talk about those when we go to reassemble. And we've got one more O-ring. We wanna take that off as well. Now we're ready to split the case. So all of the mounting bolts, we're gonna remove in a crisscross pattern. And then you've got three pry tabs to help break this free. You've got one on top, one on the side right here, and then one on the bottom. Only use those and don't pry in between the sealing surface. All right, guys, so this is looking pretty bad. Could have been worse, could have been better, but uh, now we need to remove some of these broken parts. Now, before we take anything else apart, I wanna give you guys a brief overview of what's going on in here. And that way, if you have any issues with your transmission, you're gonna be able to pinpoint that a little bit easier. So right here, you've got your shift drum. You've got your shift shaft with the shift forks on it. That's gonna help select what gear you're in. Then we've got our input shaft. This is coming from the driven clutch. So that's gonna be on the other side. And then this drives the gear cluster assembly also known as the reverse gear. So these gears on here, they're actually freewheeling. So on the bottom, you've got your high gear. In the middle, you've got reverse, that's on the chain. And then the top is your low gear. Now the next shaft, this is your idler shaft, and that transfers power to the pinion shaft. Now this is gonna drive the snorkel gear as well as the output shaft. Now on the gear cluster assembly, when the shift forks move, the gear dogs determine what gear is selected and then it transfers power through that to the rest of your drivetrain. So just be aware of that. And then the other thing I do wanna point out is this side of the gear dog, this is your parking pawl. So it engages with the case and holds the machine in place when it's in park. Now to take this apart, again, you wanna stay organized. We're gonna start by pulling up on the shift shaft rail. And by pulling up on that, that's gonna free up the shift drum. Then we can remove the shift shaft rail and the shift forks. After that, we've got the output shaft assembly. We're just gonna pull up on that. And if it's kind of hard to get out, you can tap on it from the other side. So next, the input shaft, the gear selector assembly, and the idler shaft, they're all gonna come out as a unit or all at the same time. So I'm just gonna lift up on all of these. The next step is to remove the pinion shaft. We're gonna remove the four bolts that hold that bearing in place. One of them is gonna be longer and that holds the snorkel tube in place. So just pay attention to that. Now, something I wanna point out is these do have Loctite on them. So if you're having troubles with any of them, you can use a pencil, pencil torch and heat those up. So there's a longer bolt. Now, before I pull this gear out, if you're not familiar with setting backlash, we're gonna be doing that when we go back together. So one thing you can do is grab onto the snorkel shaft and the pinion shaft and just feel how much backlash is there right now. 
and if your gears aren't completely destroyed, you're probably gonna be somewhere in that range right there. But we'll go ahead and pull this shaft out. So you can see, even though we drained our fluid, we still have quite a bit of fluids in here. So I'm gonna dump that out and we'll remove the snorkel gear. We need to remove this seal. So you have three options to get it out. There's a tool you can actually hook underneath there, pop this baby out. But if you're at home, you're probably not gonna have one of those. So what you're gonna need is either a screw or a screwdriver. And if you use a screwdriver, you're just gonna tap on the edge of the seal. You're gonna collapse this end and then pop it out. You need to be careful that you don't damage the case. But with the screw, we're just gonna drill this in maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe a little less. You wanna make sure you don't go too far. And then I'm using a rag between the case and I'm gonna use some pliers to help pry the seal out. And then we're only gonna get it so far on that side, so we'll do the same thing on the other side. And we're just gonna to try to work this out as best as we can. I'm actually having to use needle nose vice grips just because my pliers are kind of slipping off. So once you have the seal partially popped out, you just wanna use a screwdriver and hammer, pop it the rest of the way. And this is gonna be the best way to do it if you don't have the special tool, and that way you don't damage your case. Now to remove the snorkel gear, it is recommended to have a special tool, but you're gonna be just fine if you have a punch. This isn't that hard to move. So we're gonna stick it in one of the slots on that snorkel tube assembly. We're just gonna rotate this all the way counterclockwise. You can use a pin spanner if you want, that would work great too. So at this point we can go ahead and remove the snorkel shaft assembly. The next step is to remove both of these seals. Now you wanna pay attention to the orientation and the depth that they're installed into the case half. So if I flip this over, you'll notice that we have a little taper right above this seal. And then as soon as the taper ends, that's where the seal is sitting. And then on this other one, this should be really easy. It's only gonna go in one way. And then we can clean up our parts with some contact cleaner. Make sure you get all of the metal shavings out and cleaned off of all the parts. I'm also using a gasket scraper and wire brush to clean the ceiling surfaces. Now that we have our case halves cleaned up, we need to inspect them. So first thing you wanna look at is where the bearing rides in here. Make sure the bearing wasn't rotating in there. And if it was, you're gonna see signs of scoring and you're definitely gonna see some damage. So ours are looking pretty good. You also wanna to, want to look at this, make sure the casing is not cracked and you wanna check the ceiling surface and make sure it's not damaged. All right, now that we have the transmission cleaned up, we can do a little bit closer inspection here. Now, I wanna do this before I take everything apart and that way you can see what gears mate with the other ones. And obviously we had this bearing come apart and it got metal shavings everywhere, worked its way into the other bearings and all of these bearings are super rough and noisy. So we're gonna replace all of them. Now the other checks you wanna to make to the bearing is your axial and radial play. So you wanna make sure that there's no side to side play or up and down play. Now, if you have to disassemble any of these shafts, these bearings are gonna be pulled off and anytime you pull them off, you're pulling on the outer race and it's gonna damage the bearing. So you're gonna to have to replace them. And like we said, we're replacing all of ours. Now, as far as the gears go, again, we had a lot of material come apart in here and a lot of times the damage is gonna be obvious. Other times it's not gonna be as obvious. So you wanna check the teeth first. So the first thing with the teeth, you wanna make sure the gear or the teeth are symmetrical on both sides. So this is our high gear and it actually looks good. It just shows signs of normal wear and there's no material transferred from one side to another. The hard coating looks fine. So we're good on these ones, but we did have some other issues. So 
Let's check out this gear right here. This is the big low gear. And you know, when this bearing came apart, the big gear on our idler shaft actually came in contact with it. And we actually had the hard coating chip off in some spots. So we are gonna be replacing this. And typically when you see damage on gears, you wanna repla replace a matching set. So be aware of that. Now, again, we had a lot of material in here. So the pinion shaft and our snorkel shaft, these gears right here, they just ground up all that material and both of these gears are damaged. So we definitely want to replace those. The next thing you want to inspect is your gear dog. So with these, they select what gear you're actually in. And if your machine was jumping out of gear, then odds are these corners are rounded off on the gear dogs. But what you want to look for is that they look the same on both sides. So we have a nice square edge right there. So these are looking pretty good. We actually have one over here. You know, the one on the gear is rounded off just a little bit, but it's not enough to make any difference. If you have a pretty good corner there, then you definitely want to get those replaced, that and the mating part with it. Next, we're going to inspect the shift forks and shift fork shaft. So with these, you want to make sure they slide up and down freely on the shift fork shaft, which they do, so we're good. And then you want to look at the pads on the shift forks and make sure you don't see any visual signs of wear. If you do and you suspect one might be bad, you can measure the pad on one and compare it to the other. But if these are heavily scored, definitely get them replaced along with any damaged transmission parts. So these grooves that are next to the gear dogs, you know, check those, make sure you don't have a bunch of scoring in there. And then the last thing on the back side of these, you have those pins that go in the shift drum. You wanna make sure that these are completely round. If there's any flat spots, then you definitely need to replace them and you wanna check the shift drum and make sure it's not worn down either. Now for the shift drum, again, if you had those pins that were worn down, you wanna check this, any of these corners, they're gonna be flattened out and you're gonna see signs of wear there. So if any of this stuff is worn out, definitely get it replaced. After that, you wanna inspect the sector gears the same way we did on the other teeth. Just make sure they're not damaged. Then we've got the detent pawl. And with this, you have that roller on there. Make sure that's in good condition and there's not a lot of play in there. So this looks just fine. You wanna check the spring, make sure it's not broken. And then you have the detent star. Make sure these teeth or ridges on here, make sure they're not rounded off and in good condition, which they are. So we should be good to go with that. All right, now that we've inspected everything, before you go to order your parts, you do wanna be aware that you can either get OEM parts or there's some aftermarket upgrades as well. We're actually doing a gear reduction kit. So we did have some wear on some of these gears and that's actually gonna help us take care of our problems and we've got bigger tires on our machine. So it's win-win. You can also get different bearings, different shafts. So go type your year, make and model in on our website and that's gonna tell you what we have avail available for your machine. But from here, what we wanna do is start disassembling these shafts. So the manual actually shows you taking this side apart first, but it's actually gonna be easier for us to start on the other side. So we're gonna need a couple bearing pullers. So I've just got a two jaw puller right here. We're gonna hook that onto our bearing. I've greased these threads and we're gonna tighten this down and pull that bearing off. Now again, we've talked about organization this whole time but it's just important to stay organized with all of this stuff. So we'll just lay everything out in order. Then we've got our gear selector. We need to remove this snap ring. And you'll notice the sharp edge of the snap ring was facing away from the gear. We've got our washer. And we've got our bearing. And with the bearing on these needles, you're looking for any pitting, flat spots, or any damage. So I don't see any obvious damage to this, but we had all those metal shavings running through there. And just to be safe, we're gonna be replacing these. And since we got that big gear off, that loosens everything up so we can remove the chain. And we're gonna replace this. This is a common fail point, but if you're not replacing it, pay attention to the orientation because you wanna install it the same way it came off. Now for the reverse shaft, to remove all these other parts, I'm gonna to have to flip this over, but just make sure you don't get confused in the order of everything.
And there you have it. Now for the bigger bearing on the input shaft. I'm gonna flip this around and I'm actually using a crink bearing puller. I'm gonna set this around the bearing and I'm just gonna snug up the nuts on this. Now, like I said, this is a crank bearing puller and you know, these posts for it actually aren't gonna work. So what I had to do is source my own bolt. So this is a 3 8 16 thread pitch. This bolt is eight inches long, but you might need a nine inch option for a later step. And then on the tops, I actually had to grind these down just a little bit so I could slide this top bar in place. So once you have everything squared up, we're gonna remove this bearing just like we did with the other jaw puller. Now for the bearings on the output shaft assembly, what we're gonna do, I have this cup. This is from a ball joint removal tool. I'm gonna use that over the opening. Then we can use the two jaw puller to pull the bearing off. But if you don't have one of these, I mean, worst case scenario, you can get maybe one of these old bearings and put a coin or a little piece of metal over that, press against there. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Now for the snorkel shaft, the bearing is preloaded onto the circlip. So you're going to need to use a press or a socket and hammer to slightly drive the bearing away from that snap ring. Now with it unloaded, the snap ring should come right off. And we're gonna remove our bearing. Now to remove the snorkel gear, I'm using that crank bearing puller, but I had to flip this over to give me a little bit a little bit of extra room here. And uh, the other thing you wanna pay attention to, this shaft has a little lip on it. You wanna make sure you're not catching the puller on that lip and you're actually catching it on the gear. So this gear is on there pretty tight and I did use a little bit of heat to help break that free along with my breaker bar. Next, we need to remove the snap ring. After that, remove the washer. The next step is to remove the snorkel housing from the snorkel tube. We're gonna use an arbor press to do that. We're just gonna support the bottom of the tube, press on the shaft. But if you don't have an arbor press, one thing you might be able to do is support this with a few blocks of wood and then use a soft face mallet and tap that through. To remove the bearing in the snorkel tube, you need to remove the snap ring and washer. And then we're gonna hit this out from the back side. I'm just using a 24 millimeter socket and an extension. Next, we're gonna remove the bearings from the idler shaft. Now with this, normally you can just use that two jaw puller, but since ours pretty much disintegrated, except for that inner ace, it is damaged and we can't catch the edges with that two jaw puller. So again, we're using that crank bearing puller and we've just got a custom spacer here. And that bearing's not even on there very tight at all. It's coming right off. Then we can remove our snap ring, the washer, and our gear. Next, we'll do the same steps on our pinion shaft. Now for the pinion shaft, if you're not replacing the assembly like we are, you're gonna to need to make sure that you have nine inch studs and you can use those along with the crank bearing puller to remove this bearing. Now that we have everything apart, there's a few more things I wanna inspect. So with these chains, you wanna make sure there's no kinks in them. And one way to do that is just to roll the chain like that, but you can see some of these links are sticking together. And if you force them, they'll probably free up, but under their own weight, they're kinking up, so that tells me we need to replace this. Next, you wanna take a visual look at the splines. If they're damaged, 
you might have noticed that the splines on your gear selectors, maybe they were binding up or something like that, but you want to make sure they're uniform on both sides and they look like they're in new condition if you're reusing that shaft. Now on all of the freewheeling gears, you want to check this surface inside here. It's a machine surface. It should be perfectly smooth. So if you see any scoring in there, definitely get it replaced. Now on the turf models, you're going to have a planetary gear set on the output shaft assembly. So be aware of that and you're just going to want to use your manual to inspect that but you're just going to do the same inspections to the gears that we've already done on these you know on some machines instead of having a chain driven reverse you're going to have a gear so again there are some differences within the transmissions but you know the stuff we're showing you should get you through just about any of them next let's look at that bearing that came apart so this one's blued that's a sign of overheating now we did have transmission oil in the gear case so i don't think it was a lack of lubrication maybe something was keeping lube from coming up here i don't know but we do know this was spinning on the shaft here so with that being the case this pulled off really easy and if the new one goes on really easy you know that inner race is probably going to spin on here and cause you more problems so because of that you can see the galling on here we don't want that in new inner race fitting on there loose so we're going to be replacing the shaft. Now that we've done the final cleaning on our parts, we've laid out all the new parts in order. And at this point, we need to press our gears and bearings on. So with the bearings, we've gone ahead and matched up some sockets to the inner races. That's what we're going to be pressing on. I think there's one we're going to press on the outer race, but you'll see that when we get there. And, you know, a shop press is going to be the easiest way to get this stuff back on if you get creative. I'm sure you can get it on another way, whether it's using a hot plate and heating these parts up and dropping them into place. But again, we're going to use the shop press, so we're going to take some of these parts over there. Now for the snap rings and washers, most of these are stamped, so you're going to have a rounded edge on one side and a sharp edge on the other. So with the washers, the flat side, you want that to go against the gear or bearing or whatever it's supporting. And then on the snap rings, you want the sharp edge, wherever it's holding, to always be facing away from the thrust load. So if it's a freewheeling gear, you want that sharp, sharp edge facing away from the gear so it holds it in place securely. And the other thing, when you install this snap ring, you want to make sure you don't overexpand it. Just go the minimal amount. Then you just want to make sure it's snapped all the way down into its groove. Now for the snorkel tube, the easiest way to get this on, since the bearing is going to be recessed in here a little bit, we're actually going to heat this up and just drop it right into place. And then we're going to install our washer and snap ring. Next, we have our snorkel shaft gear. You just want to make sure you've got your splines lined up. Perfect. Now make sure the snap ring is fully seated, but from here what we need to do is support the flat side of the gear and we're going to slightly preload that snap ring. We're not putting a ton of pressure on it, we're just making sure that this is backed up all the way against it and we just have a slight tension there. If you don't do that, your backlash is going to change, so this is a very important step. Now to test to make sure that we have this preloaded, what you want to do is... Use your snap ring pliers. I'm not going to try to take it off, but I'm just going to try to spin this. So this feels about how it did when I first put it on. So I know I didn't put enough tension on there, but I would rather be safe than sorry. So I'm going to put this back in there and just press it a little bit more. So right there, I definitely have tension on that. So we went right the right amount. We know we're good. Now for the pinion shaft, we're all already partially together. Now we need to put this bearing retainer in place. 
Then we've got the gear. So this lip is gonna be facing that bearing down there already. Line up the teeth. And we've got our washer and snap ring. Next, we've got our idler shaft. Now, we don't have this gear pressed on, but what we need to do, just so we have to adjust this press less times, is we're gonna set our washer in place, then we're gonna slide the circ clip down a little bit. Well, we've got it set at this height. We're gonna press the bearing on the end. Okay, so now we just flip the shaft over. We're supporting the gear on both sides. We're gonna use a socket in the middle right on that shaft, and we're gonna press the gear on. So you can see we have the snap ring groove fully exposed. So I'm gonna let the washer sit on there, and we'll push the snap ring into place. Next, we'll install the bearings onto the input shaft. And again, we're supporting that inner race. After that, we have the bearings for the output shaft assembly. All right, now for the reverse shaft, we're gonna use some assembly lube. We've got our needle bearing. This thing is brand new. So we're gonna do the final lubing of everything once it's together, but the hard to reach spots, we're applying assembly lube to. We've got this reverse gear going on, putting it on so these gear dogs face the wall right now with everything sitting how it is. Then we're gonna have our washer and our snap ring. Then we're putting lube on these splines, install the gear selector. And we've got another snap ring, washer, and we've got our high gear and needle bearing. We've got another washer and a snap ring. All right, now on the other side, we've got our needle bearing and our low gear. The dogs are gonna face towards me. This is where you definitely wanna pay attention. So I'm just gonna set the washer in place and the snap ring's going on, but not all the way. We need to get our cam chain and everything or excuse me, our reverse chain and everything all situated and these shafts together before this gear is permanently attached right here. I'm gonna put this snap ring on. I'm not gonna go down all the way. Lube up the splines and we're gonna install the gear selector. And again, this is for your parking pole. So make sure that is facing towards you. So we have the minimal amount of room to get this bearing installed. So we're gonna install the bearings onto both ends over at the press. Now we're gonna take our reverse chain and I'm actually gonna leave it to the side of the sprocket for now. And we've got our input shaft, we're gonna get that on there. So I'm just gonna slide this down a little bit. That's gonna give us room. And that way we can work the reverse chain on the other sprocket. I actually lost it from the smaller one, so we'll get that back on there. Once you have the chain on the sprockets, you can slide your gear into place. When you do this, make sure the needle bearing goes on as well. Now for the circ clip, you're gonna need some 90 degree snap ring pliers. Now, since we broke our case, we need to remove our drain plug and our sensor. We're gonna transfer them to the new one, but if you're reusing your case, you don't have to do that. And that wraps up the disassembly portion of our transmission rebuild. If you need any parts for your machine, you can find those on our website. You're gonna want a combination of OEM parts as well as aftermarket. So type in your year, make and model, see what we have available for you. And if you need to know how to get this thing back together, there are some important steps, so you're gonna to wanna to follow us over to the next video where we guide you through that. Now, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATVMC. Thanks for watching.